Hello everyone, welcome to another 360 Timmy. Today we're in Folkestone, Kent, and I'm joined by my special guest, Morgan O'Callaghan. Hello. Hello, Morgan. So Morgan is a film director, um, a film director with three films already completed, um, premiered at cinemas and on big streaming giants like Prime. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna talk about that today, but Morgan, just tell us a little bit, first of all, about your background. My background, well, um, so I went to Brockhill Park Performing Arts College, and that's obviously a performing arts school, so I got into the arts through that. Uh, I began get, getting a passion for acting and stuff like that. I did a lot of drama shows, but then as I started getting older, I started getting more into the behind the scenes stuff and making films uh, when I started doing media studies. And then through that, I just kept making films uh, and just, uh, I guess, subsequently getting better and better, I think, uh, in a modest way. Yeah, I know I'd say so. From what I've seen you do, I think you definitely have. Yeah. So um, I remember it was, I was, it was 2019. Uh, I was 17 and me and my friends made this one film, not a proper film. Uh, it was just a sh mini short film called The Apocalypse. And we actually privately screened it at Silver Screen. About 40, 45 people came. And uh, they all liked it, so we decided to make another film called The Arsonist, which was my first first kind of like feature length film, uh, which we spent to put out two years making. Me and my friend Johnny Brooks, who is kind of like my my main co-writer, I always work with him. Uh, we sat in Costa every day with tea and basically spent like six months writing the script. That's brilliant. Yeah, and then we made the film. We're about ninety percent shooting. And then COVID happened. Uh, we, we already had a screening arranged at Silver Screen. Obviously, that had to get delayed to December uh, when COVID was apparently meant to stop, but obviously it didn't. Um, so yeah, we had to finish the film during lockdown, kind of illegally, I guess, try and finish filming in the most safe way possible. Yeah. And once we did that, we finished filming, sent the film off to cinema. Everything was good. But then a week before, uh, what's it called? A, a week before the premiere, we got uh, an email or Boris Johnson decided to lock down certain parts of the countries in tears. And we unfortunately didn't get the privilege of having been able to open the cinema for our film. So we had to put on Amazon Prime, which was quite, uh, it was good. A lot of people watched it, uh, but I was quite disappointed still though, because I do, I'm quite a big fan of like the communal experience. Of cinema, as yeah. Yeah, as opposed to people kind of watching it on their phone or on their laptops. But you, now, you say that quite trivially, I got that on Amazon Prime, but how, how do you get a film on Amazon Prime? Well, it, it used to be a lot easier. Uh, I was quite lucky, I got in at the right time, and you just go through this website called Prime Video Direct where you have to submit a film, they watch it, make sure it's all good, then you just put it on there. It's just, uh, obviously you have to sign a couple of things. Uh, it was a long time ago though, so I'm quite, I can't remember. But, yeah, it went on Amazon Prime. I think it got like it got watched by 150 households in the first couple of week, which I think was pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. And every uh, month I get like 70p in my bank account. Is it so? Residuals. Yeah. So we should say today we're walking in Folkestone. Yes. Okay. Where you actually filmed a lot of your films. Yeah, most of my films are actually shot here. I guess it's just where my friends live and uh, easy place to get to. So being a seaside town. It's got a lot of kind of London architecture as well, so it's got a very interesting yeah. landscape. Yeah, no, it's uh, definitely a growing city. Like a lot of people from London do move down, so it's definitely getting more of a kind of artistic influences from people moving down. A loud bus. All right. Uh, but yeah, I guess we should go on to the next film now, I guess. Absolutely, so uh, tell me about that. So we've got, we got a premiere coming up very soon, actually. Uh, yeah, uh, well, last year in December, we, I had my first real premiere, I guess, uh, for my film Detective Inspector, where it came on December 16th, you were there. I remember we had about 132 people in the cinema. Some people even snuck in without paying for a ticket, so. Whoa. I'll take that as a compliment, I think. <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, it, was, it was good fun. Everyone liked the film. Obviously, I was quite nervous, but, and we also put that on Amazon Prime as well, where it still gets, I still get like two quid every month from it, which is quite nice infinite money uh but yeah uh that, that was my last that was my that's my most recent release yeah and uh i've been going to uni for the last three years I've, i'm graduating in the next couple of weeks and for my dissertation i made a film called winter 44 which is my latest film which is premiering on 
September 2nd. So at the Silver Screen at Cinema. At the Silver Cinema, to, which, is, where, which is where we're walking to now. Yeah, we're going... So tell us about the synopsis of the film. Um, so it's about a, two British pilots. They are in... They're doing a reconnaissance mission in France, where, unfortunately, uh, one of the other pilots gets shot down, and then the other one gets shot down again, and they get, they get lost mid-air. So... The main character, played by Toby Haycock, George, he plays George Bates. He has to team up with a German deserter in order to survive. And they have to kind of make their way through enemy territory and find somewhere to stay, basically. And uh, yeah, I think it's quite an interesting story. Obviously, there's metaphors for uh, conflicts nowadays, like you know, uh, the Ukraine, Russia and stuff like that. That's currently in, in, pla in place, yeah, absolutely. Yes. So obviously, there's a lot of metaphors like that. And I think it's quite an important film because you get to see where it kind of shows that there's no sides in war. It's just like the leaders, really, that are in charge. Um, but yeah, here we are at Silver Screen. Absolutely, yeah. So we'll be here in about three weeks, three weeks from the day of recording. So tickets are available for this premiere, uh, which is coming up. But yeah, there's a the Silver Screen just in the background. Yep, there it is. And uh, where are we going now? Uh, let's just keep going this way. It's it lovely down here. There's yeah, umbrellas, it's... I think, on the ceiling, if they're still there. So the storyline you've got this time round, does that present a challenge with putting it on things like Prime? Uh, well, my last films were so easy to get on Prime. I thought this one would be just as easy, so I submitted it. But unfortunately, because I'm not, we're not a big dog studio, and we don't have like lawyers and stuff like that, Amazon had to reject the film because it's about has a lot of like, I guess, hate symbols in it and stuff like that. Because of the because of the year you're talking about. Because of the about. year, because of the year it's yeah. in, yeah. And uh, I guess they can't risk having that on this. Uh, yeah. Which is quite unfortunate. Uh, I was a bit upset by it, but you know, it's still premiering in the cinema. In the cinema, and if anything, that makes the premiere that much more special because it's it really is the only way you can watch it. Yeah. Unless I decide to release it again in the future, but who knows? But for now, the only way to watch this film, which was shot on an Arri Alexa, a very good camera, by the way, uh, is on September second. So we've already sold 150 tickets. That's way beyond expectations. And we sold them very quickly as well, so... So grab your tickets fast. Yes, uh, I'm not sure when this, this is coming out much closer to the, the actual date. So hopefully, if you're inter, inter, interested in getting a ticket, there's still some available. Yeah, so we'll put the link in the uh, yeah. description for this as well. I mean, I know you've already got your ticket. You got yours quite, I have, quite quickly. Yes, I was, well, I was straight on there because you're very good at marketing. So uh, well, I was I, I, literally I, on that website within seconds, I think, of you posting a story. Oh, yeah, I had to... Um, I love marketing. It's probably one of my favourite side things to do. Best thing about making the film, I think. That's what I'm going to miss the most. Uh, because obviously after this film I'm gonna have a bit of a break. Yeah. Uh, I'm definitely gonna miss like making the trailers and advertising. You know. Uh, but yeah, it's fun. I'm glad I'm glad you got a ticket quickly. Um, it seemed obviously worked. So I I badged you as a director, but of course you do many things. Uh, yeah, you I do think... uh, special effects. You do editing. You do camera work. Yeah, I think you've for... appeared in the film as well, yeah, like Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah. I'm obviously not the best actor. My only experience in acting was from what's it called? Uh drama yeah. at school and stuff like that where I played I, I played Dandy Dan once in Bugsy Malone I guess that was my, the highlight of my drama career uh, so yeah I've got a bit of experience in acting but obviously I'm more of a behind the camera person uh, I, I'm a, I guess I'm quite shy believe it or not so uh, yeah I guess I do, do I do visual effects as well for, uh, for this film though however we got someone else to do we have we had there's a scene where there's a spitfire dog fight yeah which was fully cgi and animated and we got someone who i've known for a very long time and uh called nathan who uh goes to the university of wimbledon and he did that for us and we paid him like 30 quid for it and yeah it looks really good uh so is it was there a budget for wings of 44 or, uh so or the, literally out of your pocket kind of thing kind of uh so the uni gives you 250 generous pounds right to make it uh, and obviously they were like, yeah, there's no way you can make an accurate World War II drama with that money. So like, me, then I just challenge went, met then. Eh? Then I went uh, challenge accepted, yeah. and then now it's uh, probably one of the most successful, not to boast, but it's probably one of the most su successful films to come out of that uni. So I guess they're quite grateful for it. It even got featured at their uh, I can't remember what it was called, but their it got featured at one of their events. I can't remember what the event's called, but it was featured there, which I was quite very happy with. Uh, and again, the special effects side, I mean, so your last film, Detective Inspector, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I was just blown away by the effects. So you had a, a, oh, a yeah. car scene. I actually thought you were out driving, but it wasn't. It was... Uh, it was the green screen, yeah. yeah. yeah oh, was... oh, yeah. Um, well, I've been doing just as... I've, I've always loved doing, like, CGI and stuff and messing around with, like, video effects to just make memes and stuff like that. So I've just kind of gradually gotten better and better and better. 
uh, learning After Effects and stuff like that. And that's how I got into, um, I guess, doing the green screen in that film. Uh, obviously, it wasn't perfect. There were some shots where it looks like they're in front of a green screen, but that's okay. It's just a learning curve. And uh, people really enjoyed it. So That's good. The music was very good too. I've got one very loyal composer. His name's Sam Johnson. Yeah. He does all the music for my films. Well, so far, he might not want to do the next one. I hope he does, but yeah, he's really good. A very good classical music director. Um, who, I've been work who I've known since he was a kid, because obviously I went to school with him as well. So do you, uh, you say you're taking a break, but I mean, do you think you'll be back soon? Oh no, 100%, yeah. It's just, this break is just so I can decide. I put this film in a lot, of, I put wings in a lot of film festivals. Yeah. And, uh, oh good, so you're going to be doing a lot of uh, schmoozing and yeah, like, screenings. Yeah, I've got, I've got to do a lot of stuff like that. Like, uh, it was given the honourable mention in the 2024 Student Film Fest, UK, the UK one. I got that the other day. Um, that's not actually public knowledge yet, but by the time this is out, it will be. Yeah. Uh, it also Brilliant. got into the Los Angeles Film Festival, which, yeah, I'm, happy, I'm very happy with that. But one yeah. thing, I, I hope it gets into, I'm, I'm going to jinx this now, but we've got a chance of getting into the National Youth Film Festival. And if we get into that, then I'll be very happy. Where, where's that being held? Uh, Leicester Square. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh the, o the heart of cinema. Wow. Yeah. That's... yeah. But obviously, uh, oh, oh. obviously that's uh, quite unlikely, but, you know, it's, it's always good to be hopeful. And there's always more film festivals around the corner if that one doesn't work out. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so your previous films that were on Prime, that mm -hmm. they were originally available, I say Prime, because that's the yeah, where yeah. you, you get those free, but they, they dropped to a different tier after, after a period of time, you, you were saying? Uh, yes. Uh, so it was an, they were both initially on Prime where you could just watch it for free. However, since Amazon are very strict about the content they have on Prime, they, I think after about two months, they put it on Prime Video Direct, which is where you have to pay 99p or something like that to watch it. Uh, and yeah, but that's, but that's okay. Uh, like I said, every, every month I make 70p, which is nice. Uh, From small acorns. Exactly, yeah. big trees, so. Exactly. That's pretty soon, impressive. Soon I'll have enough money to make, I don't know, the next James Bond with all these 70ps I'm getting. What do you see as, um, I mean, you're starting out your film career where we've gone completely digital now. Mm, yeah. Well, what's the challenges for a filmmaker going forward, do you think? Well, I think things always get easier. Uh, I think we're, we live in a good time where anyone can pick up a camera and make a film. It's just whether you have the time and patience. Uh, but I think, like you said to me earlier, that you, when you did films when you were younger, you had to use tape decks. Yeah. Which obviously, I bet when you were, you were uh, I bet you were saying like when phones came out, oh, that's going to ruin filmmaking. And that's the exact same kind of form having now with AI and stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm sure if we just use it as a tool, it won't take over. Do you think, um, do you think that's a threat, AI? So at the moment, we're in the middle of uh, an actor strike in Hollywood. Here we are, because yeah. Because they see that AI could potentially replace them. I mean, we, we've actually seen it, haven't we? We've seen uh, Peter Cushing in Star Wars come back 20 years after he died. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we've seen Indiana Jones 20 years younger in the latest film where yeah. he wasn't even in it. It was just his face. Christopher Reeve in The Flash as well. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they use AI for that. Uh, yeah, it's quite, some would say it's unethical. Others would say it's not. It's just, um, I guess, it's just, I guess it's just a constant challenge as well. But yeah, for the special effects that I mentioned earlier, you, you, uh, you spent hours keyframing and yeah. getting those right. There's so. been, like that, the, the green screen car chase you were talking about took me what about four months to do? Obviously, I wasn't constantly working on it, but it was very, very difficult to get that perfect. And each keep, oh yeah, it was. It gives me a headache thinking about it now. I'm just glad it's over with. But uh, yeah, so in theory, AI should just help make that process easier for me. Yeah. So in some ways, it's definitely good. Good, but also in other ways, it's bad because it's taking jobs away. But so that's going to be very interesting how that develops. Yeah. Yeah, de definitely. But uh, even though you're going on a break, you must be having, you must have some idea of some stories in the background, or do, do you want to? Oh yeah, I've got about all my notes in my phone. I've got about ten films lined up. Wow, that's great. Uh, let me let me try and name a few. But it's one called a rail strike. Yeah. It's one where. That's very uh, current. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's a. I watched from Bullet Train. I was quite inspired by that, and it's a film where um, obviously with my the two actors from my newest film Wings. Uh, Reggie or Aiden, that's Aiden and Toby, are going to play two kind of buddy heistmen, and they they have to perform a heist on a moving train, basically. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be quite a challenge to film then. 
Yeah, but it's just like an idea I have. Yeah. I might do in the future. There's another film I've got called The Rubber Bandits. It's just a comedy heist film again. It's very similar to Rail Strike. I could probably merge it into one film to be honest. But what's another film I have? Oh, yeah, this is what this is an important thing. I've got an idea to turn Wings into from a short film into a feature film. Yeah. Uh, to turn it from a because tw- this is only a 25 minute film. But if if we were to get funding, for example, from a film festival, we'd be able to make it into a full length, 90 minute film. Yeah. Which that's kind of on my in, on my cards right now, and we'll try and get that pushed. That's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. Especially as you've you've captured it on such a good camera as well. Yeah, exactly. You get funding, you can keep that going, can't you? Yeah, exactly. And, uh... The thing is, uh, one the one very disappointing thing about being given such a great camera to film with is that it's very disheartening to have to use a bad camera after that. Yeah. Uh, like when I look at the quality difference between my newest film and Detective Inspect, I'm like, how did I send that off thinking it was okay? So now I now I have no now I have to film my, all my films in this quality. Yeah. Otherwise, I won't feel like I'm doing good. So you you are very much becoming uh, a, 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 an expert director in terms of what you expect in terms of quality and the eye. Yeah, That's definitely. Amazing, yeah. Isn't it? That's yeah, I th- yeah, I think so. Uh, but yeah, uh, with this premiere, I've heard I'm not going to mention any names here just, just in case I'm not allowed to. But I've heard that there are some people who come to this premiere who are already in the industry, uh, so they might be able, even be able to help push this film to be into, into be made into a feature. Which would be really nice. So you'll be full on businessman at the premiere. Oh yeah. Proudly showing your film. It, it, but, went from uh, a, it went from a party to a networking event. So Well that's the way it goes, isn't it? Yeah, Edge exactly. Connections is is a key thing. Um but yeah, I I'd I'd like to mention the name, but I probably shouldn't. No, that's uh, fair enough. That's uh we'll, we'll maybe we'll catch up on a later date and we'll see how that all went. Yeah, exactly. I think that'll be quite I interesting. Think so, yeah. Although they could just watch the film and they could be like, nah, and just walk out. So you know, but that's the fun of it. That's that's what makes a film a film. Some people don't like it. Yeah. That's brilliant. Well, I wish you the very best for the premiere. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing you there. And um, and uh, yeah, at the silver screen, as I mentioned, on the second, the second of September. Yeah, Saturday, six pm. Go and watch that, and you can watch Morgan's other films on Amazon Prime. You can. Ninety p. Yeah. It's not much, is it? Ninety nine p. Ninety nine p for an entire evening with the family. Yeah. So we'll put the links for that in the in this video exactly, as well. Yeah. But Morgan, thank you very much. Thank you for it's having been me. Great talking to you. Yeah, you too. Uh, very excited for your future. I think uh, so am I. I hope.